In this video, we're going to take a look at using separation of variables to solve a simple differential equation. I do want to point out that section 6.3 actually is called separation of variables and the logistic equation. Um, this is sort of a preview to that, so this is going to be when the equation is not a logistic equation, but we're still using separation of variables to solve. So far, with respect to differential equations, we only know how to analyze the solutions to a differential equation using a slope field, which we learned in section 6.1, and to solve differential equations that are already in the form y prime equals f of x. But what if we have an equation like y prime equals 2x divided by y? So now we're in a different situation because we have a y on each side of that equal sign. So now we have to use a new strategy. We have to rewrite the equation so that each variable occurs on only one side of the equation. And this is called separation of variables. So let's take a look together at how to solve this equation, which is pretty straightforward. It's not too complicated. We're going to start, I'm just going to rewrite my original equation, y prime equals 2x divided by y. Now, typically what I do is we know that y prime is the same as dy over dx, and that is how I am going to demonstrate how to solve these differential equations. So I'm going to rewrite y prime as dy over dx, and then I have 2x over y. Now, if you're looking at an example like this in your textbook, your textbook will not have you rewrite it, um, and it's just another way of getting the exact same solution. So if you're more comfortable with the way shown in the textbook, that's just fine. So I'm going to continue this way. Now keep in mind, I want all of the y's on one side and all of the x's on the other. So I'm just going to multiply each side times dx because that's going to get rid of the x on the left side. And I'm going to also multiply each side by y because that's going to get rid of the y on the right side. So what I have left now is I have y and dy. And on the right side, I have 2x and dx. So really all I did was cross multiply. Now what do I want to do? Well now I obviously want to integrate. So hopefully you remember integration from calculus. And I'm going to integrate just like that. So I'm going to keep that 2, that constant, on the outside. So now I have the integral of y with respect to y and 2 times the integral of x with respect to x. So y dy gives me y squared divided by 2 and x dx gives me x squared divided by 2, and then of course I had that 2 on the outside that I just carried down. So on this side, as we can see, I'm going to have that 2 that cancels out. Keep in mind that you should also have a plus c. So some people like to show plus c1 on this side and plus c2 on this side, but keep in mind I'm going to end up just putting those constants together anyway. So I'm just going to call this guy over here c1. And now I have y squared over 2 equals x squared plus c1. And I'm going to multiply everything by 2. So that's going to give me y squared equals 2x squared plus, and now I have 2c1, but I'm just going to call it c2 because if you take a constant times 2, it's just another constant. So I'm just going to call it c2. And then typically you can either write this um, so that you are isolating the y, but typically we're just going to write it something like y squared minus 2x squared equals c. And I don't need to put c1 or c2 or c3. Just keep in mind that any of those constants would just be, you know, combined together. So that's all we had to do on that question. That's pretty straightforward. Again, we're just getting x's to one side, y's to the other, and then integrating with respect to those variables. 
Here are two more for us to try, and if you'd like, you can press pause here and try these questions before we go through them together. Again, these both, uh, the first one particularly is pretty straightforward. The second one, um, you might have to reach back into what you've learned in Calculus 1, but whenever you're ready, press play to see how you did. So for my first question, keep in mind that this whole side is 3 minus x. So if I'm going to separate my variables, I'm going to end up with dy on the left and then 3 minus x dx on the right. Again, just multiplying each side by dx. And you don't need to show that step. Just know that that's how we did that. From here, of course, I'm going to integrate. So I'm going to integrate each side and using that power rule, um, what color am I using? Green. So using the power rule, this side is going to be y. And this side is going to be 3x and then minus x squared over 2. Again, plus c. And again, I didn't write the plus c on the left side because it's not necessary for me to do that. Again, I would multiply everything by 2 just so that we don't have a fraction and that would give me 2y equals 6x minus x squared plus 2c which is just another c and then in terms of what form to put this in you know it's kind of up to you so I can write x squared minus 6x plus 2y equals c. I could have kept it in this form. So just kind of keep in mind what the instructions ask for in terms of what form uh, they would like you to have that differential equation in. Looking at the next one, again, pretty straightforward, but you're probably going to have to remember some things that you learned in Calculus 1. So if I divide each side by y, that gives me y prime, oh, let me rewind on that one a little bit. Remember, I'm going to rewrite this as dy over dx, and then 6xy. And now I'm going to divide each side by y and multiply each side by dx. So by doing that, I would get dy divided by y, and then I would get 6x dx. Again, I just did two things in one step. That's okay as long as it's pretty clear how you got from one step to the next. So from here, I'm going to integrate. And again, I could put the six on the outside or not. It doesn't matter because you're going to get the same answer in the long run. So remember, if I'm integrating dy over y, it's actually the natural log of the absolute value of y. And on this side, I have 6, and then that would be x squared over 2. So again, it's up to you if you write this as two different steps, and then of course plus c. The 6, and then of course divided by 2, is just going to give me that 3x squared on the right side. Um, I'm going to write that, just because I'm running out of room, I'm going to write that result as I write the next step. So keep in mind, I kind of want to get y by itself. So what I'm going to do is exponentiate each side. So I'm going to take e to the natural log of y and e to the power of all of this. So on the left side, e to the natural log of the absolute value of y just gives me the absolute value of y. On the right side, I've got e to the 3x squared plus c. And what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to write that as times e to the c. Now, why would I do that? Well, I'll show you in just a minute. But keep in mind, just so you remember those rules, if this were plus c, it's okay for me, because this is plus, to then multiply by the same base to that power. So that's all I did on that step. Now from here, I kind of just want to get y equals. So I'm going to write this as y equals. And then of course, this is a plus or minus because it was absolute value. So I have plus or minus e to the 3x squared and I have e to the c. Now keep in mind, e to the c 
is just another constant. So yes, you can do, as you will see in your textbook, C1, C2, C3, etc. I'm not doing that just because I think it's annoying. So I'm going to call that just a C out here and then E to the 3x squared. And keep in mind, because C is some constant, I actually don't need to keep the plus or minus in there because C is a constant that could be positive or could be negative. So my solution is y equals c times e to the 3x squared. Here's one for you to try that is a little bit harder. So if you're up for the challenge, go ahead and try to solve this one without my help. When you're ready, press play to see how you did. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to start by rewriting the equation. And as I normally do, I'm going to write this as dy over dx and then 10x. Now, keep in mind, I'm trying to separate my variables. I'm trying to get x's to one side and y's to the other. So I'm going to start by subtracting x, y from each side. That's going to give me dy over dx equals 10x minus x, y. So far, so good, but again, I don't have any variables separated. So I'm going to factor an x out of the right side of my equation. So I have dy over dx equals x and then 10 minus y. So now I'm getting somewhere because I should be able to pretty quickly now get x's to one side and y's to the other. So I'm going to multiply each side by dx. And again, you don't have to show that step, but you certainly can. And by doing that, I'm going to have dy by itself over here. On that same step, I'm going to divide by 10 minus y on each side. So now on this side, because again, I've divided by 10 minus y, I just have x dx. So again, if that's too confusing for you to do all of that in one step, feel free to do that in two separate steps. But here's where I stand now. I have dy over 10 minus y and then equals x dx. Again, now I'm going to integrate. So on the left side of my equation, I'm going to end up with, let's choose a color, same color. Let's do natural log of 10 minus y. And now keep in mind that when I integrate this side, I need, in order for it to meet that pattern, I need, if there is a uh, derivative of the denominator, I need that to be involved as well. So notice if I took the derivative of 10 minus y, it would be negative 1. So I'm actually going to put a negative on the inside and the outside. So this is actually negative natural log of 10 minus y. Again, throwing a lot of stuff at you from calculus one. On the right side, obviously that's very straightforward. We have x, the integral of x dx, which is just x squared over two. And again, plus c. And I'm choosing to just write plus c the one time. Just as I did before, I'm going to do some uh, exponentiation to get rid of the natural log, but I don't really want to deal with that negative. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write it as natural log of 10 minus y, um, absolute value of course, and then I'm going to put the negative over here. And now keep in mind that would also make the c negative, but you don't have to write it as negative, again, because it's just some constant and the constant could be a negative. So from here, now I'm going to do my exponentiation. So I'm going to take e to the power of each side of my equation. And on the left side, that's going to leave me with 10 minus y. And on the right side, I have e to the negative x squared over 2 plus c. Again, just as I did before, I'm going to write the plus or minus over here. And I can rewrite this as e to the negative x squared over 2e to the c. 
and again just as I did before e to the c is just another c and this plus or minus is not going to matter so I'm going to have 10 minus y equals c e to the negative x squared over 2 and then of course I'll just keep going to get that y isolated if possible. So I can subtract 10 from each side, which gives me negative y equals c e to the negative x squared over 2 minus 10. And then I'm going to multiply everything by negative 1. And that's going to give me y equals. And then again, it's a negative c. and I can write it as c or negative c. I can write it as 10 minus c e to the negative x squared over 2. Really, it doesn't matter if that c is positive or negative. And that is my final solution. So if you got to the end there, then great job because that was a lot of review from Calc 1. Up next, we are going to take a look at models of exponential growth and decay.